So we're, we're building our own uh, battery cells. Uh, we, th we think the most advanced uh, cell in the world here at Giga Texas. Imagine a car that charges in five minutes. A battery that grows stronger every time you use it. Question mark. Question mark. Sounds impossible, right? For years, lithium defined our hopes and limits. But behind the walls of Giga Texas, a new chemistry is rewriting history. This is not just an upgrade, it is a revolution. Stay with us, because today we explore how Tesla's aluminum ion system could end the lithium era. A future where limits vanish and energy finally flows without fear. Lithium's Rise and Hidden Limits Lithium once stood as the hero of the electric revolution. It turned the idea of battery-powered cars from science fiction into something people could drive on real roads. The first Teslas used it. So did city cars built by rival brands. For a moment, it seemed that lithium had broken the grip of oil. Light, compact, and powerful enough to move vehicles, it was hailed as the chemistry of the future. Yet beneath the headlines, engineers saw the cracks. Lithium could not charge quickly. Drivers waited at stations longer than they wanted. Every cycle took life away from the cell. Capacity slipped little by little until range was lost. Stress pushed it toward heat and sometimes into fire. Thermal runaway became the phrase no driver wanted to hear. Still, the world kept using it. There was no clear substitute. Small improvements appeared each year. Cooling systems managed heat a little better. Pack layouts squeezed in a few more miles. Superchargers cut waiting times by a few minutes. But none of these changed the truth. Lithium had limits written into its physics. The problems reached beyond engineering. Cobalt, a key material in many lithium designs, came from mines tied to abuse and conflict. Prices rose and fell with politics. Supply chains snapped under pressure. Scaling became harder and more expensive. Lithium gave the world its first chapter of electric transport. But it also built the ceiling that every company eventually hits. The question no one dared ask. Most companies kept working to polish lithium. They added coatings. They tweaked cooling systems. They redesigned pack layouts. Each step brought small gains, but never solved the core problem. In Austin, a group of Tesla engineers paused. They asked why the industry was chasing the same path again and again. Why try to stretch a material already near its peak? Why not search for a chemistry that removes the limits altogether? The thought was risky. Billions were tied to lithium mines and factories. Every automaker depended on the same supply. Changing direction meant breaking with the accepted truth of the industry. Still, they asked, what if the answer was not another patch but a complete break? What if another element could offer speed, strength, and safety at once? That single question opened the door to something new. Inside the Austin Breakthrough. Aluminum had been tested many times before. It was cheap, it was abundant. It carried current better than most metals. On paper, it looked ideal for storage. But experiments failed again and again. Aluminum ions are locked in place and cannot move freely. Cells overheated and collapsed. Degradation came fast. Most labs gave up and called it impossible. In Giga Texas, the story changed. Tesla engineers returned to the challenge with new tools. They built carbon graphene structures layer by layer. These lattices guided the ions along clear paths. The problem of ion lock was removed. Movement became fast and smooth. Tests showed something shocking. The new structure not only held charge, but released it instantly. It did not overheat under stress. Instead, 
it grew more stable. The more cycles it endured, the stronger it became. This was no small upgrade. It was a break from the old rules. Lithium faded with age. Aluminum aligned itself and kept running. Power flowed without lag. Safety is maintained without heavy cooling. At that moment, Tesla turned aluminum from a failed idea into a living system. It was the start of a design that no longer followed the limits of lithium. Quantum Burst Control Tesla gave the new system another layer. They called it Quantum Burst Control. Old batteries pushed power in a steady stream. That flow was limited by internal resistance. It created drag inside the cell. Quantum Burst Control changed the pattern. Instead of a slow stream, it sent rapid pulses. Each pulse was timed with high precision. Energy reached the motor almost before the driver touched the pedal. The effect was immediate. Acceleration felt different. Torque came without delay. There was no pause between intent and motion. Numbers from testing shocked the team. Output climbed past 7,000 watts per kilogram. That was more than five times stronger than the 4,680 cells. Heat did not harm the design. Where lithium faltered past 40 degrees Celsius, aluminum thrived at 85. The harder it was pushed, the smoother it became. This was not a small gain. It was a new way to release power itself. Five-minute charging. Charging has always been the weak point for electric cars. Drivers compared it to the quick fill of gasoline and felt the gap. Even the best superchargers demanded long waits. It was the excuse critics used again and again. Inside the Texas lab, that excuse collapsed. Engineers connected a prototype vehicle to a regular supercharger. The pack reached 80% in only five minutes. Observers watched in silence. No loud fans, no stress alarms, no signs of strain, just clean energy flowing at a rate no one thought possible. This moment marked a shift. Refueling time was no longer an obstacle. The barrier that slowed adoption for years vanished in front of their eyes. Skeptics had argued that electric cars would always be limited by patience. Here was proof that speed belonged to batteries, too. The experience of owning an EV could now equal or surpass gasoline. The slow age of charging ended that night in Austin. Stronger with every cycle. Lithium cells always weaken with age. Each charge and discharge chipped away at their strength. Drivers felt it had a shorter range and slower response. Replacement was only a matter of time. The aluminum design told a different story. Its internal lattice shifted under stress. Instead of breaking down, it realigned. Every cycle healed the structure. Performance grew more stable the harder it was used. Tests showed half a million cycles with no measurable fade. The range held steady. Power remained sharp. Engineers compared it to bone that grows stronger after a fracture. For drivers, this meant freedom. They could accelerate hard. They could tow heavy loads. They could charge as often as they wished. The pack refused to wear out. This was not a battery that decayed. It was a battery that learned to endure. Redwood and the Model 2. Tesla did not place the new cell into an old frame. They built a car around it from the ground up. The project was called Redwood inside the company. To the outside world, it became known as the Model 2. This was not meant as a luxury flagship. It was designed for the mass market. The target price was under $16,000. The range was set at 550 miles. Recharge time dropped to only five minutes. On paper, the numbers looked like fiction. Industry voices dismissed them at first. But the aluminum ion chemistry made those figures real. Prototypes were hidden under plain covers. 
They looked unfinished, but carried a secret. Journalists invited for test rides were stunned. Zero to 60 took just over three seconds. Lap after lap, the power stayed constant. No overheating, no slowdowns, no warnings. The Model 2 broke the caution that once ruled electric cars. It invited drivers to push harder, to drive without limits. It was the first machine to fully reveal what the new battery could do. Factories of a new era. Building such a cell required a new type of factory. Lithium plants used wet coating methods that consumed huge amounts of water. They were slow, costly, and hard to expand. Tesla chose another way in Mexico. The site became the first facility built only for aluminum ion packs. It used a dry electrode method that cut production time in half. The process saved billions of gallons of water each year. From raw aluminum to a finished pack took less than three days. The design was made for copying. Instead of one giant plant, Tesla planned many smaller sites. Each microfactory could produce a million packs per year. Local materials meant local independence. This network avoided the choke points of lithium. It offered speed, scale, and resilience. The factories themselves became part of the revolution. The end of the lithium era. The unveiling shook the entire industry. Automakers had built their future on lithium. Governments invested billions to secure fragile supply chains. Investors believed the chemistry would last for decades. Now the ground shifted. Aluminum showed performance that lithium could never reach. It offered lower cost, longer life, and near instant charging. The race was no longer about improving lithium. It was about escaping it. Some rivals doubted Tesla's claims. Others rushed to fund new research before falling behind. Energy regulators began drawing plans for an aluminum-based supply chain. Nations feared missing the new standard. The meaning was larger than cars. Grid storage, solar farms, and data centers could all change. Lithium marked an age of limits. Aluminum opened an age without them. Lithium carried electric cars from dream to reality. It gave the world a start, but also set boundaries. Slow charging, shorter life, fragile supply, all became walls no one could climb. Tesla's step into aluminum broke those walls apart. A battery that grows stronger under stress. A pack that charges in minutes. A system that thrives where others fail. This is not a small advance. It is the opening of a new era. The question now is simple. How fast will the world follow?